It's a book called Capturing Music, and it's about the, the medieval discovery of how to record music. When you consider you live in a world where music, or all sound, exists only in the present, you can't see it, it won't hold still, it's not there, and it occurs to somebody to make marks on a piece of parchment and carry them across the street and use that piece of parchment tomorrow to remind him or her of how to sing a song that we sang yesterday. We call it musical notation nowadays, and we think it's pretty obvious, but when you consider whoever first thought of making those marks was thinking of an amazing thought. So the book is about that, and it shows pictures of beautiful medieval manuscripts, and it has a CD in the back that sings those manuscripts to you. It doesn't teach you how to read music, it just lets you know about how music works and what a magical thing this recording device is. We think we know how musical notation works, because when we write down music, we put in two pieces of information. How long does the note last, and what note is it? We tell what note it is by where it is on the lines and spaces, and we can tell how long it lasts by its shape. It's a half note, it's a quarter note. Interestingly, in the very earliest notations we have, which really just are wonderful little gestural marks, we can't tell what the note is, and we can't tell how long it lasts. So, from our point of view, what's the point? There's nothing there. Well, everything is there because those signs are for somebody who already knows the song and it reminds her of the kind of song and it's full of nuances about how the song goes. So it's kind of direction for how to sing the song rather than the song itself. Just to think about this fellow named Guido. We all call him Guido of Arezzo. But in Arezzo, where there's this big statue of him, they call him Guido the Monk, because they know he's their guy. Guido is the fellow who figured out a way to write down music in such a way that you could sing, by looking at this music, a song that you had never heard before. We call it sight reading, um, and it's pretty amazing because the earlier notation was a reminder. This is something that, uh, that is prescriptive that tells you what to do. You lose a lot of nuance, but you gain a huge amount of time because you no longer need 40 years to learn all the songs of Gregorian chant. A wonderful thing. Another thing that um, Guido the monk did for us was to ruin the piano keyboard. Have you ever wondered why on the piano some of the white notes have black keys uh, between them and others don't? Well, there's a reason for that. It's the white notes are Guido's and the black notes are other people's. Guido said, let's give names to all these notes. He said, you know this hymn for John the Baptist that begins, Ut Quaint Loxis. Well, here's the melody for Ut Quaint Loxis. Did you ever notice that each line of the poem begins on one note higher than the previous one? So it goes, Ut Quaint Loxis, Resonare Fibris, Mira Gestorum, Famuli Tuorum, Solve Polutis, Labile so he said, let's just call the notes by the first syllable. He said, we'll just call them by those syllables. And we've been doing that ever since. Which only later did we stick these little black ones in between. Nobody would invent a keyboard like this from scratch. This whole, this piano keyboard shows the whole history of notation and of music and how we thought about it, going back to Guido, who is all the white notes, and even before his time.